Our verse today is Zechariah chapter 2, verse 10. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold I come, and I will dwell in your midst, declares the Lord. Zechariah, like Haggai, prophesied during the rebuilding of the temple at the time of Ezra. Another prophet that prophesied around this time is Malachi. Zechariah and Haggai shared the same kind of optimism to see the temple rebuilt. They were very hopeful about a national restoration under the leadership of Zerubbabel, who was a descendant of David. Read Haggai chapter 2, 20-23. Chapter 1, verse 7 to chapter 6, verse 8 of Zechariah record eight visions with the overriding theme of the expectation of the Messiah. Our verse is from the third vision, which speaks about Jerusalem in God's restoration plan for Israel. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. Jerusalem is usually described as a woman, daughter of Zion. Zion is another name for Jerusalem. God's choicest place where he has chosen to dwell. Read Zechariah chapter 2 verse 12. Therefore the daughter of Zion is a metaphor for the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Read Isaiah chapter 1 verse 8. Or a metaphor for Israelite nation. If you read Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 14, and God says, Behold, I come and I will dwell in your midst. It becomes explicitly clear in chapter 8 where Zechariah sees the relationship between Zion and Jerusalem as God's dwelling place. He says, Thus says the Lord, I have returned to Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called the faithful city and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 3. God wants to make a home among his people. As Isaiah says, shout, sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Isaiah 12 verse 6. Also read Ezekiel 37 27 and Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 15. What does it mean to dwell in the midst of his people? God dwells amid his people collectively and individually. God's presence in the temple was a unique dwelling among his people. But he also dwelt among them individually as temples of his presence. St. Paul understands this indwelling on an individual level. He says, For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and work among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. Read Leviticus 26, verse 12. God lives among his people by dwelling in the individuals and holy places like the temple. The verse is also a prophecy about the coming of the Messiah. Zechariah says in another place, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. Zechariah 9 verse 9 We know that Jesus fulfills this prophecy in the Gospel. God dwelt among his people in the flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. And his word took flesh and dwelt amongst us. John 1 14 In accepting Jesus, God dwells in us. God is always looking for a home to dwell in. Let us offer him a place in our hearts. That is what he desires most from us. Lord, make our hearts a fitting dwelling for you. Amen. God bless you. Have a lovely day.